Thank you for having me. Absolutely. A Hoganorn is solutions provider for the greenhouse horticulture. We provide already for over 50 years uh, control solutions for uh, greenhouses. Um, that's where it all started. But uh, yeah, lately, uh, also developments in uh, indoor facilities, vertical farms. Um, so you see that picking up. Um, aside from climate control solutions, we also have our labor management solutions to, to track the labor and make yeah the, the most efficient way for for labor in uh, in growing facilities. Uh, actually, that's that's exactly what it entails, or that is at least where it starts. Eh? Um, you see that over the the years, the greenhouse facilities uh, really um, uh, grew in in technology and in size, uh, and that means that with every new facility, there are new needs, new developments, and as an automation uh, solutions provider, um, more and more. Uh, the question comes, can we integrate? Can we use new technologies integrated in, in the controls, making sure that for growers, you still have one platform um, that you use and yeah, try to keep it as simple as possible, although the technology and the challenges become more and more complex. Well, that's that's always uh, quite a challenge. Um, when it comes down to integration, first we we talked about integration of all kinds of sensors. Um, yeah, in the past that was done uh, with analog uh, signals, but more and more we see the need for uh, Modbus, Mag Magnet uh, integrations, and yeah, that's for the more complex technologies. Um, we also see that more and more uh, internet connections are uh, required. So uh, with an API connection, you can also more get information together, shared, uh, pulled into the control system, or actually from the control system, shared out to certain partners. We well, we have our own um, sensor suite. That's where we always start, and then based on the market developments and and more and more clients picking up on a certain sensor type, we determine if that's uh, yeah mutual beneficial uh, to to get it integrated. It is. We have to be careful as an integrator not to spend a whole lot of time in one-off integrations, but we have to uh, increasingly look at the, the bigger market as a whole, what does uh, ben benefit most of the growers worldwide. So we're not looking for one particular center in one particular country for one particular application, because that will eat up too much of development time. We look at the, the benefits of the growers uh, worldwide.
Uh, and then you get also in uh, in the discussion who owns the data, where is the data stored, uh, how long is it stored for. These are very interesting discussions to be had. Yeah, when it comes down to, to technology solutions, the labor is one of the biggest aspects of greenhouse uh, production sites. Um, and aside from managing the climate as efficient as possible, you also want to manage, have oversight of your, your labor cost. Um, make sure that you put your labor resources on the most efficient way. Uh, get an, uh, a clear insight in how to train, uh, support, uh, improve your, your your labor resources. And we make that insight with our uh, labor solutions packages as well. It is not integrated with the climate control. I, uh, yeah. And the reason for that is on the, on the control side for climate and growing, you really have a grower that is managing all that data and analyzing all that data. When you talk about labor, you really talk about uh, managing people. And that's another type of person that is typically uh, um, uh, working with that. And that also means that you need a different package for that and, and work that uh, separately. Well, we, we're uh, already uh, over existence of uh, 50 years. So yes, uh, we've, we've seen quite a bit of developments and changes over the years. Um, and yeah, I'm super, super excited uh, to, to see the developments um, and all the topics that come up. And, and lately, the, the uh, re recent uh, topics, of course, are uh, robotics and robotic integration is one of the topics uh, that we see come up more and more. Uh, and that ties in again with the challenges for labor and labor costs. Um, another topic is uh, specifically related to data, analyzing data. And one, one group of people says artificial intelligence and a lot of uh, 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 people really like that term. It's also becoming a little bit of a buzzword. Um, but at Hogan Doran, we, we really look, like to look at it as intelligent algorithms. We have to uh, look forward and almost predict what is coming up. And then with that information on what we predict is coming up, uh, the outside weather conditions that are coming up, how the plant is growing, you actually make setting adjustments to be ahead of the game rather than being reactive. Yeah. Because when you talk about artificial intelligence, you look a lot at historical data. And um, there are a couple of challenges with that. Historical data, when it comes down to weather, is not necessarily, not necessarily predicting the weather that is coming up. It gives you an idea. But if you steer on the ideas of what you think is coming up based on historical data, you can still be quite wrong, especially when it comes down to, to weather forecasting. Um, so that is one of the challenges uh, that we uh, that we face. Um, and aside from that, if you look at historical data, um, you have a, a, a different planting date, you have different planting strategy, you have uh, sometimes different varieties. Yeah? So all these parameters, when you look at from historical perspective, are not necessarily dead on when uh, looking at strategies for the for now and the future.
Well, maybe it's it's good to to start with uh, Let's Grow. Let's Grow is actually a sister company of Hogan Lauren, and it's an online software suite where uh, information data from climate computers is pulled into uh, the cloud. And you can combine that with additional sensor information. You can uh, combine that with um, uh, crop models, crop modeling, and uh, crop, crop registrations. And with that information, you can actually plan a strategy moving forward. The advantage of having Let's Grow as a sister company is that you can use certain strategies that you set in Let's Grow automatically be um, executed by the Hogan Lauren Ivo climate computer. So that is uh, one advantage. Aside from Let's Grow, you, you mentioned plant empowerment. Now, plant empowerment is a foundation, and uh, Hogan Dorn is one of the founding members. Plant empowerment is really something uh, that is close to our heart because it involves in putting the plant central which is something that, that Hogan Lauren as a company also strongly believes in. And we look at plant biology or plant physiology and greenhouse physics. And those two elements are strong uh, factors um, that you actually calculate strategies on. So we really think those two aspects come together in yeah, building more efficient growing strategies for indoor environments. Yeah, so so there are two things. Eh? So let's grow as a is a cloud platform and is not only working with the Hogan Dorn control system. So let's grow can also work with competitor cloud computers. Okay. Um so it let's grow is really a data uh, analysis and strategy platform um that can work separately from the climate computer. So it's it's really to to for growers a tool to to look at their growing strategies and how they can improve things. No, that's that's a very very good question. Um, and the answer is no. So the client owns the information and based on the specific client with the specific crop in a specific facility on a specific location, you try to uh, uh, make efficiencies possible. We don't anonymize data. We don't share data. It is possible to share data. But the grower or the owner of the data determines what to share and when exactly. So I can imagine sometimes a grower would like to share uh, data from uh, his his facility with a crop consultant to discuss uh, the strategy. And then when they have a specific technology trial in compartment six, then they can share the date of compartment six relevant to the trial with a specific supplier of the technology to see where things can be uh, fine-tuned or improved. So, but that is all managed by the customer. So we don't have any involvement in that. And anonymi uh, anonymizing data and, and pooling it together um, is not giving the best possible strategy in every single case. It's an average. Yeah, and nice. some people that are below average will benefit. And some people that are above an average, they uh, and are really, really good growers, they can only lose. They can lose because they get lower quality settings and strategies back 
But, and at the same time, they make their competition stronger with sharing their data. So yeah. it's a very dangerous situation to be in. And that's why um, from from less grow perspective, uh, and that is not done. Absolutely. If you look at uh, uh, a facility like a company in, uh, out in uh, British Columbia that has two locations, uh, one closer to uh, to uh, the ocean and the other one more inland. Sure, there are climatic differences, uh, climatic, uh, like even um, uh, greenhouse specific uh, differences. So you can't say, well, we pull it all together and we do the average and we execute it on both. It's not going to work. Uh, it's going to work, but not as good as you, you're really hoping for because you try to excel both sides. The beauty of plant empowerment is that in essence, if you if you follow um, concept, you can already execute the, the 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 concepts of plant empowerment with your own facility, with your equipment and sensors that you have. Uh, and that's a good start. And then down the road, you can improve things with additional sensors. But I always say one of the biggest uh, steps that you can make is actually um, really start working with the concept. Absolutely. Um, the the big challenge is if you if you grow on intuition, um, you're really growing uh, from the perspective of past experiences. You know that certain things work and certain things don't work. There are quite a few growers out there that are excellent growers that can grow very very well on intuition. They grow very well on intuition because they have uh, a strong knowledge base, strong history. And the other aspect that we then um, have to talk about is growing based on data. So the growers that grow on intuition and are growing based on data, they really, the good growers, grow still based on data and not solely about let's have a little bit of an average here and there. Um, and that's where I think plant empowerment is a good aspect because it actually explains the data, it, it explains the calculations behind it and why plants are behaving in a certain way. Um, and also, uh, I, I also believe that people, um, can't grow a plant only from behind a computer solely. You have to walk in your facility. You have to be in tune with your plants. Um, vegetable growers, they get their uh, plants in from their propagator. And based on how the plants come in, are they strong, vigorous, very vegetative, or do they come in rather small and generative? Initially, it takes a little bit of a different approach. When it comes down uh, to 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 uh, um, field plants, if you grow up uh, your bedding plants in a greenhouse, they look great in the greenhouse, 
but if without any further thought you put them outside and they're uh, out in the elements, those plants look very nice in the beginning, but are yeah uh, hurt very badly if you don't harden them off. And, and you need to understand uh, those concepts as well. Yeah, we uh, we hear that uh, as well sometimes that people are uh, not necessarily afraid or concerned about their position, but uh, one thing is for sure, things are changing a little bit. Uh, what we try to accomplish is that growers are making more educated decisions based on data rather than making a decision based on what they did the last three years in the springtime uh, when they got their plants in. I would definitely say so. I think technologies and and new developments you have to see as an opportunity to do better, to do better as a grower, to have more acreage under your control, uh, to do things more efficiently, and most of all, have more fun in what you're doing. Because let's be honest, nobody wants, as a grower, nobody wants to be behind a computer about uh, three quarters of the day trying to analyze data and to make all kinds of setting changes. They want to be out with the crops, seeing their plants thriving and grow strong and, and, and healthy. I'm just throwing that I out. I like that angle, actually. Maybe, maybe it's a little bit of both. Absolutely. And sometimes I, I try uh, the analogy of uh, an autonomous driving car, because for, for a lot of people that speaks uh, to mind, um, not everybody, and especially uh, now uh, things are developing fast, but like if, if we would talk a couple of years back, nobody would believe in an autonomous driving car. Uh, and more and more you see that it is actually possible. Uh, certainly there are challenges and that is with climate control and, and the greenhouse production uh, equally the same. In the end, with an autonomous driving car, you still have to put in a destination. You still have to determine how fast you actually want to go. Uh, and if there is a, a two alternative reroutes, you have to tell the system uh, what you prefer. The, the the fastest reroute or the most uh, uh, fuel uh, efficient reroute. And I think that in the end is with climate controls and automation solutions exactly the same. You as a grower, you still have to keep the system in check. You still have to 
give a general direction um and and in that way uh, once we know that with the control solutions we can make things happen uh, as as simple as possible Yeah, I mean, it It also depends on, on how the pricing of your crop is and how the cost of, uh, of energy is. If if energy is is a little bit less and, and your pricing for your crops is, is high, you don't mind spending a little bit of extra energy uh, to get your crops uh, re ready quickly. But when the energy cost is high, you, have, you make different, different economical decisions. And as a grower, you always uh, have to determine what is best for me. Do I tailor to the, the, the contracts that I have outstanding? Do I look at the cost? And again, every year that is different. You got it. That's exactly it. Oh, that's, yeah, it's, it's just uh, a question. Uh, how far do you want me to look in the future? And, uh, and, and, and do we look at uh, uh, our current limitations or do I have free reign? Um, what I, I do see is that the technologies integration like robotics have become more and more important. Uh, growers are more and more looking at one single platform where everything comes together because with every piece of technology, it seems like a new platform uh, is, is picking up to show growers data. But now you have six different new sensors that you try out with six new different platforms that only show that particular portion. Sometimes they try to add other information as well if they put a, a sensor package together. But then you have information they have data data needs to be transferred in, in into valuable information and then you still have to act upon it so i think there is going to be a, a consolidation of platforms to to a more uh, um, stable platform that fits uh, those specific needs um, and actually what i really liked uh, uh, a couple months back i had a a presentation for Niagara College. And I told the, the students a little bit about uh, the history of horticulture. Um, then I took them to to new developments and, and where we are standing today. And I also asked them, like, what do you guys see as in, uh, in, in future developments? And you had different uh, breakout groups. And it was really nice to, to hear a little bit of uh, their thoughts when it came down to um, uh, more uh, interesting new uh, energy um, resources. Eh? We are still very much dependent on fossil fuels uh, in the greenhouse horticulture. Mm -hmm. Different resources to to power up and uh, and 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 fuel the greenhouses was one of them. 
uh, when it come, came down to um, um, uh, fertilizers for for crops, to to see more on uh, individual uh, macro and uh, micronutrient uh, perspective. But what are we actually giving to the plants? What are they taking up? What is coming back? Um, what is being taken up by the plant is is really uh, an interesting aspect that I don't think is that far away. Um, we're talking about fertilizer recipes, but how about crop recipes? How about uh, light recipes? And, and there are quite a few companies out there uh, doing pretty cool stuff with, uh, with, with light, light spectrum and, and light controls. So having that integrated, but those are just a couple of topics uh, to to be had, and then you can go as far as where are we growing? Yeah, we're now growing on the flat plains, rooftops. Uh, is already happening. Farming. But yeah. how about yeah? How about uh, greenhouses on uh, on on columns of water, uh, lakes or 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 other places? Uh, um, recently, I saw an article about experiments of growing plants in space. I mean, you can take it to whatever level you want. Oh, true. And, and what I really like is that we actually have a whole bunch of new, exciting students that want to be part of this industry because it's a beautiful industry and I'm very passionate about it. And it's just amazing to see young kids come up and uh, and, and wanting to be part of it. So I think it's, it's definitely something uh, that is heading uh, in the right direction. I can go very, very fast, uh, and and some of those things that I mentioned are already there. Um, the key is to uh, and 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 especially from from our perspective as Hogan Dorn as an uh, um, an integrator of technologies, we really really have to keep close tabs with the developments and be ready for for these connections and integrations. And I think that is the strength of being on top of that is also benefiting the company as a whole and more so the customers that are using our solutions. Good point. Uh, I think there is going to be um, 
down the road a, a, a point where uh, data is more uh, generalized. I, I, I really think in the in the benefit of uh, of our customers, uh, they need to be able to to have systems uh, to talk to one another. Um, but on the other side, uh, it's it's great if you have systems talk to one another, but it doesn't bring things necessarily together. And especially if you have six, seven different technologies, even if they talk to one another, how do you know if if that integration? Uh, uh, how do you how do you keep oversight in what all these sensors are are collecting and determining? And and more importantly, how do you make sure that the conclusions and directions that are coming from all these integrations are your right course of action moving forward. Yeah, yeah and, and if you look at the, let's say an application for, for light controls, an application for light controls is collecting data to make light controls more efficiently. But then you have an application that is uh, looking at grower strategy saying, hey, I need more light. Then you you already see a little bit of a conflict of interest, a system that really needs more light to, to have a better crop growing. And at the same time, an, 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 another system that says, well, but I try to do it as efficient pos as possible. So now this is just two. If you have five, six uh, independent applications talking to one another, where are the decisions are being made, and and when do you do uh, take the right actions on these different platforms? Yeah, now what you see is that with the smaller, like lower tech uh, facilities, they don't have those challenges that much because they have a little less money to invest. There are like for the for the bigger tech companies, hoop houses are not necessarily an interesting market to jump in. So there is for these clients uh, less. I wouldn't say uh, that uh, that uh, that there is less available to them, but it is less interesting, and people, yeah, then typically try to to forget a little bit about that market. Unless a client steps up and says, "Hey, I want to buy it anyway," then sure, here you have a quote. Um, from our perspective, in in the automation side, we we really like to 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 provide our customers with a a base or a step in model. And our solutions are able to grow with the client. So if you have one hoop house, you have a, a, a rather simple system, and then we can open up for more IO, more input output controls. And, and that is called the IVO Compact. And then from the IVO Compact, when, when clients grow to a certain size, then you get the discussion. Uh, maybe we can upgrade to a full IVO system and uh, get a more functionality uh, available at that point. So, from controls perspective, we like to grow with the clients as well, and that comes also with the technology and the additional sensor suites and packages.
Yeah, that, that actually makes sense. And 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 let's be honest, an a, a facility that grows uh, ten acres of bedding plants in a high tech uh, greenhouse facility um, grows them more cost efficient uh, than growers in uh, in ten hoop houses uh, down the road. They have the technology; they they grow more efficiently. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they price themselves out of the market uh, because those smaller family-owned businesses, they still uh, have a, a different strategy to go to market. They don't supply their uh, solu- their products to uh, the, the home hardware stores. They provide their solutions on the family and uh, and, and, and town markets uh, on the on the on the on the on the farm markets and 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 and, and the local uh, uh, hardware store that that likes to have a little bit of an additional uh, setting of of crops, um, and there is a place for them as well. Is that a place that is uh, going to be there for the long term? In the end, you have to to be price competitive, um, and that comes with volume and uh, and with your market strategy. Absolutely. And and don't get me wrong, those growers are still very good growers for their market, for their strategy, for their business. Um, Do they uh, invest in in a high tech uh, picking robot or or spacing robot? Probably not, but that's okay. I mean, they still grow, they are still passionate for the business. And yeah, they're on a a different uh, pathway for, for their business strategies. There's no right or wrong in in this case. Absolutely. Well, thank you for uh, for having me in this podcast. It's uh, it's really uh, been a pleasure. And uh, right after this uh, after this session, if you have any other questions, feel feel free uh, to to reach out to me. And if any of the audience has a question specifically for me, uh, feel free to uh, to share my contact details. And I'm happy to uh, engage on their their questions.